Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Starletter Star Dollar Series Team Season Bell. 11 Group Stages. It is four anchors plus a sea captain versus my insanity here. A best of one series that is about to get underway. Radiant well, we have to get through the draft Bell. first, but no problems there as we're underway in that. Two picks already for both sides. Again, four ASC versus my insanity. Two relatively new teams, Dollar but Team strong Bell. teams at that. Teams that have performed well recently despite a couple of missteps, especially from four ASC in their previous game up against Vegas Squadron. Thank you so much for joining us again. My name is Mont. Joining me today is Blaze. And Blaze, how are you, man? Doing pretty good. I got to see some new meta tactics coming out of Four Anchor's previous opponent, Vegas Squadron. So, I mean, it's just as a theory crafter, it's really fun to, to get into that and just really look at the numbers, see the potential uh, in play. And although those kind of ideas sometimes only work in a vacuum it's it's awesome to see it actually work in a competitive game and uh the fact that they were able to kind of stabilize their lanes well enough to to make something like that happen and it makes four anchors have to look at things a little bit differently like jerax he has to look at the draft and say well what if it's not just drow vicious that you have to worry about but drow wind ranger and all these other things it just comes down to a point where drafting becomes uh, a really high level thing Ten because seconds. there's so much depth to it. You have to be worried about all these fringe picks. Broodmother's coming out. Uh, <laughs> obviously, last game, Wind Ranger was a pretty big deal. But of course, you also have to look for the kind of flavor of the month, tried and true core heroes. The phases of the Tide Hunter uh, making a reappearance here in this matchup. And uh, I think uh, one thing to note, of course, is Mind Sandy have some really, really good supports. Dazzle Vengeful. The fact that they get Vengeful in phase two in general is really good, but obviously the Naga and the Visage were more of a concern for them. Yeah, we talk about value 10 for my insanity. They certainly went to Walmart for their Vigil Spirit pickup. They get it. They get it done. It's cheap. Five seconds remaining. It's right near Christmas as well. They get a little present for the holidays. So Milan getting a good draft to start things off. You talked about the Faces Void. Uh, the Faces Void Skyrath combo is something that is very comfortable and easy to do. In 4AC, they want something comfortable. They want something easy. They, especially after that last game when they went for a Bristleback and it didn't work out in their favor from a Tummy Man. So get something going their way. Uh, they did ban out Slark, by the way, which that's actually Matumba Man's probably his best hero, or one of his best heroes, so <laughs> a bit surprised that they uh, they banned it out, but they didn't have first pick, I believe it went to my insanity instead, so actually they might have, I'm not sure, hmm, regardless, for well, ASC. Ben, ben, uh, my insanity did have second pick, because they picked up Venge first in this phase, so yes. okay, that true. means they, did, they wanted to open with the Skywrath, and uh, they didn't want to be threatened by the Slark. That's fair for 4 ASC. They have one more pick to go. Uh, actually, two more picks to go in this next pick phase. What else is going on here? The Naga, the Visage Band we talked about, the Enigma, and the Ember Spirit Band, as Ooh. they realize the Matumba Man is good. And the Elder Titan Radiant picked up for 4 ASC. Now, is this a support ET? Is this a offlane ET? Doesn't matter because ET with faces void. Pretty damn solid, so... I mean, the Dazzle is already a good hero to kind of respond to it as far as limiting physical damage, but there's going to be a lot of magical damage coming forth. I would uh, not be surprised to see a little bit of magical nuke damage coming out. Maybe, like, a Puck could come through for the side of 4 ASC. It really depends on what Volux is comfortable with here, but um, no matter the case, they are going to have to deal with this PA threat, and... Uh, I think a hex hero like Lion would work pretty well too. Uh, of course, you mentioned ET probably as a support here. The concussive shot is a really good setup for his damage output, so that would not be surprising. But remaining. hell, you could see a mid Lion or mid Lena. I don't know something that can just like really single five out the PA and make it more difficult remaining. for her to man up. Because as it stands right now, she's not going to be threatened by the Void. Uh, it might be the Skyrath Mage on top of the Void, but then you have the Vengeful Spirit Swap to bail her out. The Shallow Grave as well. This PA is going to be very aggressive. Yeah, I'm excited because with aggressive PAs means lots of kills. And already my insanity have a very aggressive lineup to get him with. The Tide Under Dazzle and Mitchell Spirit. Uh, Phantom Assassin just kind of adds on to that. Um, there is going to be armor reduction as well. So PA should have a very easy time in terms of taking Roshan, in terms of taking fights. If there is no Chronosphere up and available, it just comes down to lockdown. You need to have a magic missile ready to go. Uh, so Faces Void can't time walk away. Elder Titan and Skyrath Mage, they'll be food for the most part. Uh, a couple more picks going to be coming up for 4 ASC. They have only 8 seconds left in reserve time. They seem to be stuck at a right here. They're not sure what to pick up next remaining. in this game. And I don't I don't blame them. It is going to be Storm Spirit coming up for 4 ASC. And this definitely needs some lockdown. It's a very good hero up against a lot of the heroes that they have on the side of my insanity. So. It's a really tough game to just uh, draft against. Like, my insanity actually have a really solid draft. As far as, like, what we've, what we've seen from their team play, it has Ten left something to be desired a little bit. But overall, if they have an overwhelming draft, then they still have a really good shot going into this game, even though four anchors have proven themselves as far as individually very skilled players. 
But, uh, yeah, I mean, like, the Storm Spirit, he actually might... I mean, he's obviously going to go for the Orchid, and then probably needs to go for the BKB. But after that, he, he definitely needs to look at the Hex. So he's got a very tall order ahead of him as far as item progression, because otherwise they're just going to have a lot of issues dealing with this PA. I mean, the Void can go for, like, a second item MKB, but in general, like, PA is going to be running over this lineup. Like, it's going to be... Very difficult to control her, very difficult to limit her aggressive potential, and I think she's going to be the one to just look at to, uh, for them to counteract or for her to just run away with the game. The good old last ban brew coming up from my insanity. Everyone's kind of Radiant a bit concerned team. about that pick. Everyone's just like a little bit scared. They don't want to give it away for free. They don't want that hero to just run over the opposing team. My insanity are like, listen, that hero is still strong, even with the nerf to the spiderlings in their vision. Is that really that big of a nerf when you think about it? No. But was it picked that off beforehand? Absolutely not. It doesn't really... I mean, it's a niche pick for sure. It could be countered, especially if it's picked in the first phase. Legion Commander is very solid against it. So uh, the only real issue is if it gets picked last. And four anchors plus a sea captain, they had room to use it, obviously. With Elder Titan faces Void Scarath Mage, maybe they try Storm Spirit mid and then throw that Broodmother into the offlane, and all of a sudden you've got yourself a tough time ahead of you. Well, not anymore. Ryan Sandy say, screw that. We're not going to take it. You're not going to take it. We're going to grab something else. Currently, they have a Tide Hunter, Dazzle, Vengeful Spirit, Phantom Assassin. Will they send the PA mid? Will they get a safe letter here or vice versa? We will have to wait and see as my insanity are going to pick up their last hero right in 1 minute and 30 seconds. <laughs> yeah, not, not, not that much impetus behind their final selection here. They have a lot of ways they can go with it. Um, uh, if they want to rock the PA mid, that's fine against the Storm. It's not going to be completely outclassed. Uh, but, I mean... In this position, do you really need anybody else to go for your safe lane to feel confident in your late game potential? Like, as long as the void isn't ro rocking a refresher orb here at like the 45 minute mark, you're pretty solid with your PA here. Um, so yeah, the, the eventual will be roaming a little bit. They'll have a lot of physical damage to come out. We talked about the Slardar quite a bit the, the previous game. Maybe that's something that could come into play. Uh, Sven, we've seen Screw quite that a bit hero. of Slardar. Yeah, <laughs> God. Yeah, dude, his sprint got buffed. So I good. Hate that hero is disgusting. Yeah, he had he has some real potential, but uh, I until we actually like I, it's a hero that you shouldn't like speculate. Maybe they can pick up. It's one of those that you talk about once it's actually on the field because nobody picks that trash. Honestly, uh, like I don't. I would love to talk about Alchemist here. I think Alchemist would be really strong, but no, just just it's it's not a hero you pick up in a lot of situations, and certainly not against Skyrath Void. So it's just like they want physical damage. They want something that can rock the safe lane or the mid and. I don't know, a Juggernaut would be pretty solid, but they go for the Night Stalker. Hey, oh, the Night Stalker pick. Dire We've seen this from Vernus Pro Polar a lot. Uh, it's usually banned first against VPP because they know how to use it well. This uh -huh. hero is actually very strong currently. This is a hero that I like watching and is very, very solid. So, okay. I see 675 you. units of vision for your Observer Wards. That's just, it's, it's just awful. It really is. Plain and simple, like... The the counter to Night Stalker is good vision, good map awareness, good wards. Uh, he can smoke a few times, maybe pick up a couple of kills off of that, but in general, he needs a lot more than just a couple of kills to really become a real threat. But we already talked about how PA is going to be the prime player here. She's going to be the threat. Night Stalker's just going to give her time for it. And uh was thinking about this. wasn't sure if they were going to go for it, but uh, what I would consider is a PA and Dazzle counter. PA has relatively low HP to work with initially, and she still takes full damage from the counter helix, plus a little bit of mitigation from armor. And uh, the Dazzle Shallow Grave will not keep her alive here. So Matumbo Man, he can play actively, he can play aggressively, hopefully more aggressively than we saw with the Bristleback, and I see some real potential in this hero pickup. That's the issue, man. You go for another hero that's like not a Matumbo Man hero necessarily, and like... The, it was bad when they had the Bristleback and they couldn't get anything done. Now they have an axe here, and, and what exactly are they going to be able to accomplish with this? I agree that it's good against Dazzle, obviously, because it goes right through that Shallow Grave. The Culling Blade is going to be super useful, but then you have to deal on top of that with a Night Stalker who's going to be running at you. And it's not just the vision that was changed. The day and night cycle no longer gets paused when you use darkness. So uh -huh. that means you can use night time or you can use darkness during the daytime without any sort of issue and it'll be it'll be night by the time you're done with darkness in the first place. So Yeah. That's huge. On top of that darkness duration was uh did Nerfed, I guess. It, yeah, well, it, it got modified, really. It's just like the with the cooldown change and the duration change, it had to be, because otherwise it would just be really dumb with yeah, the clock, lack of clock pause. So it got reworked, I would say, as far as the timing of it, and I think overall it's a good change for Night Stalker, especially the ones that kind of actually plan their 
timings out with the darkness. But I still think the biggest aspect of it is the vision reduction. Like that is is something you just can't underrate. For like, how easy is it to kill off the Skywrath mage who just can't see two feet in front of his face? Uh, the Storm Spirit, uh, they can get they can get in range for a crippling fear before the Storm Spirit knows what's coming. It's just it's scary stuff. Milan is something they're gonna have to deal with, and then uh, after about 15, 20 minutes, so we'll be cool. Yeah, this is gonna be an issue. How do they shut down these heroes uh, on MY for four ASC? It's gonna be difficult. Specifically, Grazina, the top lane, looks like he's not going to have that rough of a time, I don't think. I think he's going up against the Storm Spirit safe lane, which is not all that bad. Grazina should get farm. He could stack oh, Ancients as well, although they did change it. So, I, I forget, they buffed the Ancients, or I guess nerfed the Ancients. I don't know what they changed exactly, but... Uh. For the Ancient Creeps, I mean, the biggest thing would be the Golem providing 15% aura that makes it harder to farm stacks. Okay. All right, well... Do you, can you still um, Ancient Stack and use your Anchor Smash to be able to take that farm as Cuisine? Yeah, it's it's the exact same thing. It just takes 15% longer if there's any Golem spawns. Well, then Grazine's not going to have too rough of a time. Bottom lane, will we see an engagement here? Matumba Man is just discerning his dominance. He's like, this is my damn bounty rune. And he takes it. He's going to head back towards mid. Uh, he has Counter Helix early on, and uh, he will try to block the Creep Wave once it gets there. Did they also get the top rune? They did. It is the Jerex bounty rune going his way, so... Both ruins going for 4 ASC, my insanity, they don't seem too threatened by this, however, although, we'll see how this thing turns out. Trixie, bottom lane, off lane, faces Void. Um, he can get zoned out pretty effectively, they do have Magic Missile, they have some damage early on, obviously, with the PA, not so much with a couple of levels, that will be the case, but my, my, the biggest thing for me is this mid lane and how this matchup goes. This is not an easy matchup for Milan, he does avoid the Berserker's Call, but, uh, Already, mm -hmm. I mean, you can see my type of man wants to man up on this Night Stalker. So. Yeah, this, this is going to be a fun, fun lane to watch. But Night Stalker's actually avoided almost all, I think, all the counter helixes. The Axe right-clicks the Night Stalker to aggro the creeps, so he procs counter helix. But he has, I think, avoided every single one of them. Just dancing about the creep wave, still finding a couple CS here, and he will find the bottle. There's going to be a courier on the move. This was spotted by a Radiant Observer Ward, but it is bringing a smoke at a seat out towards uh, the rune spawn so i'm not exactly sure the intentions there it looks like jerks will pick it up along with a bunch of radiant creeps he has hijacked away and <laughs> i don't know if that's the the best way to control the creep equilibrium but it certainly is a way he's gonna bring this back and that means that grazina is gonna get some pressure here or some some creeps going to his tower milan is gonna get his bottle they're right clicking each other the county helix is going between the two yeah you talked about milan dancing back and forth and so far the creep uh the creep blast hits uh, have been even for both of these heroes and I mean, even my Tumba Man with his counter helix is unable to do that much against Milan. So, Milan's having a pretty good time down bottom. PA is farming freely here with seven last hits. Storm has four, so uh, still early on in the game, and uh, we might see movement. There is going to be the Berserker's Call. Milan takes a lot of counter helix box. That was the first real set of damage that came out <laughs> from the Tumba Man that actually did some work on, on Milan, and he's going to have to be careful about it. Yeah, he'll start actually using Tango since he's had these two pooled ones for the first two minutes completely freebie. Um, Fox on top lane is actually taking a lot of hits here, but he's just farming aggressively and popping the sav. But yeah, I, I guess uh, farming the vo Volix here will give him a little bit more gold than he would find in the mid matchup against the Night Stalker. And the big thing, of course, is that at level th 6, he's not just going to be completely negated as far as his escape potential. Um, but yeah, it's, it's still hard to gank like the Night Stalker in this position, although he is slower than he could be at the daytime. He still has 295 MS, and he is going to have his boots coming out now. So he's doing pretty good in the mid lane, Diving but he's doing the best. Trixie is going to time walk away. They're going to blink, Phantom oh. Strike, and Cole is going, and he gets the kill. Cole, first blood going his way. I did not expect him to dive that far. He will take some tower shots, but he is fine. They get the first blood. TP back in from Trixie. Cole has to back away. Maybe. Are they going to go again? They're thinking about it. Magic Missile is going to go, but there is absolutely no follow-up. Trixie's just like, that was okay, cool. And then uh, back to the lane we go. Yep, so it's going to be better for Grazine than it is going to be for the Phase of Void. Void gets a little bit more experience now, but he can't farm Ancients like Grazine can. So, Stack already coming through for the Tide on the Radiant side, and... Yeah, it's going to be a bit of a snowball lineup for four anchors. Like, because Trixie's not going to be in carry mode for, I don't know, 30 minutes at least, because of the fact that he gets nothing on the offlane, it is going to be about how much momentum Matumba Man as well as Volix can build on their respective snowball heroes. Yeah, I think, honestly, MYI are going to snowball faster, especially with the Night Stalker early on in this game. And if four ASC Could. get caught out, I mean, if they die to a Night Stalker, then there's a good chance that this game becomes very difficult for them. And, I mean, it really comes down to that first night. 
Milan hasn't skilled up his Hunter in the Night just yet. He's holding his points. He doesn't have attribute points. He's level four, and he's got two unskilled points, and now three unskilled yeah. points. So will he get one point in Silence, two point in Hunters in the Night? Will he get three points at Avoid? Uh, we'll have to wait and see what his... Uh, what he decides to go for, so... Yeah, 3 one, one will definitely be the build he wants to go, but it's very interesting that he... the way he's holding his skill points, obviously they don't do hardly anything during the daytime, so you're not... oh, he does go three zero two. so he's not gonna be really worried about ganking the Void or the the Skywrath very or fairly on. Maybe even the Storm Spirit gets oh, level spoofy. 6 in time. Spoofy. Oh, this is good. It just got night time, you can't man up here, my man. Oh, he misses the Berserker call, and Boofy's gonna get right-clicked down, Milan with the movement speed, and... And now, and down in the bottom lane, or actually top lane, Nyx gets to get the kill on Jirax. Milan chasing after Matumba Man, he does have Berserker's Call in two seconds. Void's gonna go. Is he gonna go for this kill? He has the Poison yeah, Touch. Lazard's here with a double damage rune, and Matumba Man is dead. Oh, what a disaster for 4 See, and Milan gets two free kills. And if the night was to end right now, it is it is worth it at this point. It is, it's excellent going for Milan so far. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just a really good usage of the first for like 30 seconds of the night and a really bad positioning from the Elder Titan. At this point, he does pick up a TP scroll, and this is the most important thing to note. As far as stun cancels, there's the Venge and there's the Ravage and Void. As soon as he voids, which is very early on in a gank, you immediately TP out and you should be fine if the Venge isn't behind him. So that's the big thing here is the supports that need to be carrying TPs. We've got four TPs. Only Storm is lacking, and as we mentioned, the Crippling Fear was not skilled up yet, so he should be able to ball away. Yeah, he is currently level five, though. That's the thing. They want to kill him before he's six, and, and by golly, they should be able to do so. Oh, Gus yeah. is going to go, and there's going to be the Void on top of that as well. Concussive Shot doesn't slow Milan that much. Anchor Smash goes in. Pull goes to stop, but they get the kill. It was very close for him to be able to get out there, but Milan secures that kill before he does hit level 6. That's huge. Milan is wrecking this first night with three kills to his name, two kills and one assist, I should say. Mm -hmm. Bottom lane, Matumbo Man is coming in here. He's going to look to zone at Cole. Will he dive the tower? Phantom Strike is available. Uh. Nyx is behind the tower. He's going to use the Stifling Dagger as well. Magic Missile, Nyx decides not to use it and backs away. Although Matumbo yeah. Man keeps jogging in and out, back and forth of this tower. Another Stifling Dagger, they have Magic Missile. Are they going to use it? Lazard's here as well. But Matumbo Man's not the easiest hero to take down. They will poison attack. touch him. Stifling Dagger, Berserker's Call animation is used onto Nyx now. Nyx is low time while coming in. They do oh. use that. That is the Calling Blade, and that is going right through that Shallow Grave, unfortunately. That's just too much, and Nyx gets caught out. Yeah, the Night Stalker TP being on cooldown down there is the big thing. Otherwise, he, him TPing right on the axe would have been easy pickings, but Dyer's instead, without even a Chronosphere, they take down and put a point on the board. And I'm actually surprised that Dazzle even bothered scaling Shallow Grave uh, this early on. Like, I would still consider it like a point that you put in at level 8 or 9, but putting it in before, like, around level 4, it's just not going to be worth it against this axe. Like, he's still going to be able to chop through most of the time. It, it It's... It's okay. I mean, I'm not going to say it's, like, disastrous, but it obviously was useless there. Right now, the top two net worth, the first being Cole, who's just farming up a storm down bottom. The second being Milan, who's farming up a storm in terms of he's just killing people. Mass murderer, Night Stalker coming in. This guy is frightening as all hell. I mean, his face opens up. Berserker's call mm -hmm. goes, and he's just trying to clear this creep wave. Nyx comes in. Magic Missile's going to fly. Wave of oh, Terror, and, and he is dead, man. He is absolutely going to fall here. Milan on a killing spree. Matumba Man comes in and just gets wrecked by these two heroes. And yeah. I, I don't know what else I can say about Milan's play early on in this game. I mean, it's being well supported. I will say that. Like, oh, Carnosphere is actually going to come out just to get Trixie away from Cole here. Um, and he pops Darkness. Just uh, It doesn't extend. Again, this is actually a weird use of Darkness here because the daytime is going to be at 8 minutes one way or another. And uh, he's only getting the Darkness value out of it. So the enemy vision range is reduced. But we're 30 seconds away from daytime, and he's going to be lacking uh, that potential uh, steroid. Milan has got to be careful now, actually. Matumba Man got a lot of spins there. And with max level spin, Milan is going to TP top. He's going to bottle up. Maybe expected him to go home, but they're going to look for a kill top cuisine. No Ravage yet, but of course, Velix does have ball lighting. Does he have a point in silence yet? Yes, he does. And the duration at nighttime, it's five seconds at its first level. You don't even yeah, need to scale up, honestly, after that first level. I mean, the cooldown mm -hmm. stays the same. There is no reason to skill past, you know, that five second mark. But guess what? They realize that he's missing off the map. Felix is gonna head to the jungle and fall. Well, they actually have this observer ward. Even with the six seventy five MS, I did see Milan's rotation. Yeah, so. that's true as well. They didn't I didn't catch that one out, but they will see Milan rotate up top. They back away from the tower and they actually rotate a lot of heroes down bottom as they're looking for Cole, who is now in a solo safe lane situation. He's got his drum recipe up. He's gonna finish it off. Eight minute drum treads. Cole needs to jump away though very soon. He's got no creep wave to do mm. so. 
And now he's going to get caught out. Concussive shot. Do they have an ancient seal? They jump away. Matumba Man. Berserker's call. Oh. Misses from Matumba Man. The TP's in. Bad. The stifling dagger crit. Matumba Man, he actually calls an illusion. And how? Oh, well, a creep. Just to get moving speed, honestly. Uh, he tried to get out. Unfortunately, will not help him out. Trixie just decides to jaunt away with his usage of that. Time walk. He'll get out of dodge. And that'll be the end of the engagement. And again, what looked to be an okay engagement before as he turns into a disaster. As Cole gets a part of another kill there, so... Yeah, that's kind of awkward, because this should be the time to shine for four anchors. So, like, it's quite literally daytime. This is the day walker. He's not that much of a threat, although he is banking 1,900 gold. I think that this is the time where they can start getting aggressive and start finding openings for kills. But just diving in and feeding like that was very awkward from Matumba Man. And we do see a bit of a skirmish here in the jungle. They will catch out Jirax here. Nyx has no mana left to He's the... No TP, but yeah, it's still going to be... The Skyrath that's going to be the one to slip away there. The the Venge, although out of mana, had the Night Stalker at her back. And again, Matumbo Man, he's nowhere near Blink, so he can't engage long range with that kind of stuff. And uh, yeah, right now I think it's just NYI happy to farm passively. The Darkness is coming up in just uh, about 15 seconds here, and from there they can fight with all their potential whenever they need to. It almost feels like he's playing this like the old Night Stalker where you just sit back and farm. Yeah. And he might use Darkness and he might get involved with the, the ability in, in a couple of seconds here. But it might just be waiting for nighttime again, honestly. And I don't know. We'll see. Yeah, I mean, tw uh, two minutes is not that long to wait here. The tempo isn't destroyed by any means with uh, them waiting for the night to resolve itself again. Um, but Trixie's having a really hard time down bottom. Cole really wants this kill. He's going to go in. The Phantom Strike will not follow the time walk. And, uh... Yeah, they're just going to be back to farming here. Net worth of 4,500 on the PA, and that's why they can kind of rest on their laurels. That's why they can uh, allow the Night Stalker to not even go for uh, aggressive like combat items. He goes for a Midas because he knows the PA is doing extremely well this game, and it's going to take four anchors a very long time to counteract her. They are going to try to gank here on Milan in the mid lane, although his Midas is completed. It's not flying out yet. Invis ruin up for Jirax. Ancient Seal Silence is up as well. Oh, no darkness. Berserker's call, and Milan is about to be just caught out of position. Maybe he gets the darkness off. Silence, darkness does go. Can he get out? He's body blocked. He can't oh. move any particular way. But Cole comes in and blows up Jirax. But Tubba Man now getting right click down as well. But here comes Trixie. Chronosphere is available. They're going to use They're going to have a TP right on top of the Chrono. Trixie don't, does don't, no damage. Don't, the Shadow don't. Wave going in as well. Berserker's call only onto Grazine, who, by the way, is ravaged. He's going to pop it oh. off, hits both of them, and they're gonna kill one, they're gonna kill two, and they're gonna get three kills out of this. They don't deny the tower, but that is fine. They lost the Night Stalker, they can deal with it. And MYI with another huge fight, and Cole with a huge TP. Yeah, really big TP from Kowath Cole and Grazine, turning things around there. Uh, the tower is still kind of a win for four anchors, as everybody on the side of 4AC needs gold, but as we can see, they're able to happily make their way to the 12 minute mark, to the next night here and they've got the hand of midas on the night stalker now it gets to finally use it here at 11 41 and this is just a time where four anchors they have to make something happen now they're up against a pa and a midas night stalker and uh as well as a tide that's going to be farming up ancient stacks very soon like they're just gonna get this next stack coming out and things are gonna get ugly from there valx is starting to get closer and closer to that orc level so that's great but yeah, he Three needs that soon. Generation. It's actually going to be a very quick orchid, I think, in, in comparison. Nope. Jirax is going to get silenced up. He's going he to try to TP away. He will TP immediately. Nice move. And uh, that's not going to... He will not survive. It's still, it's still good play. Like, that is actually really the best response you can have. You are dying, and there's not much you can do, but the, he actually gave himself a fighting chance by timing the TP perfectly. As soon as the Void comes out, you pop that TP scroll, and you make sure that you get as you get out as quickly as possible. You have a chance to survive. If Jirax is a bit tankier, he survives there, but... Mm -hmm. Or if there's one less hero. Like, the Dazzle, the PA, and the Night Stalker all being in range is quite unfortunate, but mm -hmm. there you go. We did see Tide miss his stack just by a second or two there, but he still will farm this stuff up pretty quickly. Uh, one, two, four is the skill build, but he cleans up these Ancients nice and clean. Uh, with the help of uh, actually a Medallion coming out from the bench, he uses the positive buff on the Tide to nullify the, the few hits that will go through that last uh, point of Crack and Chill that he doesn't have, and yeah, they're just going to be able to farm him up to Arcanes plus 1350. Here at the 13 minute mark. But Summon Man does finish up his Blink Dagger. It's flying here currently for Trixie. What does he have exactly? He still doesn't even have treads yet, although he has mm. enough money now. He might go for like a rebound Midas, but even that seems kind of questionable at this point. So for him, he is so far behind now. He needs to just, I don't know, set himself for the jungle, but he can't really farm there effectively. Mm -hmm. He has to find Chronosphere kills, but he doesn't do enough damage to actually do anything. So. 
I, I think he has to go for the Midas this game, even if it is like a 17, 18 minute one. It sucks, but there's no digging yourself out of this trench. He had a terrible, terrible landing phase. That's uh, putting it mildly, honestly. It was that bad. He, the, the thing is, he got lucky in that he didn't die more, actually. He should have died maybe a couple more times, but he has time walking to get out of a bad situation. And, well, not super awful for 4AC. I mean, they're in a position where they desperately need to claw their way back Dyer's into this game, but they have attack. a blank now from a Temple Man, and they're baiting a kill bottom, and they might find somebody. Maybe the Vengeful Spirit, but at least that's a kill. A kill is a kill. Uh -huh. As uh, is set off, and Boofy's going to rotate over as well. In fact, four heroes coming down to this bottom lane Dyer's just to secure either farm or kill for a couple of their heroes as the Whoa, Tier 1 tower might get assaulted. Valex Ball Lightning's up to the high ground. They actually spotted him doing so as there is this ready and observer ward. So now Cole Dyer's and Nick stand under the tower. Is top lane is getting pressured. Grazine is thinking about TPing over as he is very close to. Oh, okay. It's actually going to be the Night Stalker. Milan is going to get spotted out here by the Astral Spirit. And now you back Dyer's away. Look at this. Tower. As soon as they see. Milan rotate down bottom. Everyone just leaves. Everybody. Yeah, so we're going to have a stalemate here because essentially, like, the wards are too good from both sides here. Actually, Storm Spirit taking uh, a big hit from the Dazzle Shadow Wave. That's kind of surprising. But, uh, no, in general, like, both sides have great Observer wards. The one you talked about, the bottom rune spawn for the Radiant side, and the behind the tower one for the Dire side. So they saw the Night Stalker rotate. They know where he is is where blood is going to be shed. So they're going to be able to see him coming. And uh, that's that's important for avoiding death from both sides here. Cole picks up a helm in the Dominator, so just another item on his way to being however slotted. Same. Milan dives to Rax. Rax is going to TP away and will survive. Dyer's and with Milan there solo, with one more hero, they get that kill. But Milan is just diving a bit too deep in that scenario. Tier 1 tower med is gone. 4 AC's Trixie finally gets room to farm up. And his Midas is actually getting close to finish. And Matumba Man will guard him until he finishes that up. And the only hero in the vicinity is Lazard with his Dazzle, so... Tier 1 tower for a bit of farm for Trixie in the mid lane, it looks like his bottom lane is about to be assaulted and taken down by MYI. Yep, they get Cole with his two points in blur and the uh, helpful Midas going the way of Cole, and they're able to take down that tier 1 and immediately rotate in to this Roche pit. They get the Blink Dagger on Tide, so this is not even risky, and uh, it's going to be other time to try to scout this stuff out. Or perhaps, maybe not. Oh, he just uses the spirit to farm. They are worried about the tier 2 push, but something greater is happening in the shadows. Yeah, Milan is going to get healed up with the Shadow Wave as well. It is daytime coming out now, so his damage is going to lack, but it doesn't matter. He picks up the Aegis regardless. Double damage rune for him to bottle up as well, as if That's he wasn't huge. having a good game already, so... And he pops the Arcus immediately. They're looking to go. Pop in the DD rune. They want to hunt on the Void. Trixie has a TP, though, and he should be alright, even though they have Ward Vision on him at the moment. Um, just looking at the Dire Vision, yeah. They, they will see him, but uh, the big thing here is darkness is now an ultimate that you pop at daytime more than anything else. Like, the nighttime darkness, all it does is reduce the sight range, which is nice, but it's it's really the darkness during the daytime that it makes the most impact. He goes right in on Boofy. He's like, okay, TP home, buddy. We're taking your towers. You are not counter-pushing oh, the here. Mystic they tried to turn it, but he's got the Aegis. I don't know. He dove a bit too far there. His team is coming out to help him here, but Earthsplitter's going to go Milan. Might be throwing this a bit. Chronosphere onto a couple. Oh, Trixie, wow. is he going to do anything with this ball lighting? Milan's still trying to live. Blink Ravage is going to go, and it might still be okay. Swap Magic Missile Valix is going to fall. It is daytime. Milan has to back up now. They've completed their dive. They've gotten one kill out of it, at least. They get the Vanguard. Trixie falls as well as Cole goes to work the stomp onto a couple. They're going to shadow wave them up. They're going to heal up. They're going to back away. They are diving a tier one tower. The Courier taking a hit. The tier one, they're down with the tier two tower at 17 minutes into the game with the tier uh -huh. one still alive. And they get two uh, kills out of it. Wow. I mean, you can't ask for a better chrono from Trixie. That was absolutely incredible to get a four man chrono there. It obviously helped them focus on those that were outside the bubble, but end of the day, this Night Stalker is too tanky to bring him down twice. He just got a Vanguard now, so he's even more durable. And he literally shrugs off tower attacks now. Like, they only hit for like 110. Then you absorb 40 of that, then you obviously mitigate damage from the fact that he has 9 friggin' armor, and he just literally doesn't care about towers anymore. So he'll dive as deep as he wants to, Darkness is coming back up. This guy, there's no downswing for him, there's no, like, it used to be Night Stalker was hills and valleys, hills and valleys. This guy is always able to be ready to fight. There are, like, slivers of time frames where he actually is vulnerable at this point in time. The tail end of that fight, obviously, the sun shines brightly, but... Here, 1813, 
He's looking fine with his darkness right back up and Dyer's Midas Vanguard in his inventory. And well, how do you deal with the Night Stalker now with the Dyer's recent changes to him? I mean, if he's able to fight pretty much at all points of the game, you have to find this this very small timing window where it's daytime, he doesn't have darkness up, and he doesn't have, you know, a team to help him out either. Like, yeah. those are three things that are going to become a very big issue for 4AC. And now Cole is farming in his own right, so they don't really need Milan. He carried through the early game. Yeah. Cole will carry through the late game. So, Well, two, a couple aspects to it. It's, it really is the fact that they have the PA to go to the late game. Otherwise, this would be a snowball lineup. And uh, Night Stalker, like, all you do is just avoid death. You, you use your TPs intelligently, you play it safe, you get reactionary TPs, and you uh, shut him down before he gets this big and before he has this good of a supporting staff. That's, that's one aspect to it. Another way to try to deal with it is to draft a really long, drawn-out team fight type draft. Because Darkness lasts 50 seconds, let's say he pops it 10 seconds before the fight actually hits, you have to have that fight to last 40 seconds before... A Night Stalker really loses his b big level of impact. So he's not great at slow sieging. He wants the, the fights to end quick and dirty. And uh, yeah, I think a, a long drawn out team fight type lineup or one that just in general survives and doesn't feed, that's going to be the, the way to deal with Night Stalker in the future. Easier said than done as I, I think if you're looking at 4AC's lineup, they want to jump in and out. They want to get quick kills. They want to have quick fights. And uh, that certainly benefits them, but it also benefits MYI because of the lineup they have. Dyer's They're going to TP back home to the tier 3 tower. They want to defend this tier 2 tower. Um, Milan does pop the darkness. Glyph's available. They're going to pop it off. Um, Stomp's going to go in. More TPs into the tier 2 tower now. They want to TP in. They want to try to fight this, but there's no way to catch up against Trixie or Matama Man. They all blink away. They TP out. and uh, Just kind of a weird tower exchange that neither tower die in the back end of it, so... That was a good trade coming up for 4AC. They get room to farm, they get room to go for the tower, and as long as they don't lose with Tumba Handy here, which they definitely won't, um, yeah. they're okay with that. The priority still has to be countering the PA here. Like, survive and counter the PA. And in, in this position, they can still go for MKB eventually on Trixie. So they can go for Hex sooner or later on the Volix Storm. So, yeah, they have to probably get a BKB on him first because yeah, this crippling fear is... Insane at level one, as you mentioned, he's gonna start ranking it very shortly. But oh my God, Cole gets a double damage, one crit, and Trixie wow. doesn't even have time to just time walk away. Phantom Assassin, Shoot. oh my God, that's that's a lot of damage. A thousand forty-eight in about like two auto attacks. Like, jeez, it's just it is it, the God rune here, and uh, we're gonna see maybe Matoma Man get a hit on him. They're gonna yeah pop the drums, Phantom Strike in. Oh the bash! And... Oh my God, Cole! Goodbye, please, you're disgusting. Stop it, Mega Kill Streak, Matoma Man. What are you doing there? You just saw your friend die in three hits. I know you think you're an axe, but doesn't matter. Oh yeah. no! And Milan, top lane, Velix, silence up. The Orchid is gonna go. Velix is in some trouble. Has to ball lightning away. In just a second, we'll do so. He ball lightnings all the way across. He's got a bottle up, and there's no way he can get this kill anymore. But now. They're going to jump into Jerax. Poison Touch. Swap Magic Missile. Goodbye. Grazee blinks into the trees. That's all. Oh, tricks to get back. Oh, my God. Cole, stop it. Stop it. My God, dude. Just go easy. Oh, one what point a disaster. Of Please. For a and C, for dude. Or the, this is just going to be a raffle. They stuff. needed an intervention, man. This game's getting difficult Radiance quickly. And difficult is an understatement. This game is actually almost impossible, it feels like. The DD rune RNG, the bash RNG, the crit RNG, like somebody just it really it does require divine intervention to this fight for Ice 4 Frost, AC please to, help. Four AC are until This is just not gonna work. Uh tier two after tier two gonna fall. Roche completely gonna be in control of MYI here in a couple minutes when it does indeed spawn. And I mean there's just no damage on the side for four anchors. They have amplification from the orchid, they have setup from things like the ET and the Chronosphere. But end of the day, they're not putting anybody into dunk range. They just don't have any damage. The most damage they have is the Blade Mail on Axe when it turns damage the other way. But guess what? PA just picked up the BKB. That's not going to do anything. This is my problem with not putting the faces forward on the safe lane is that he sometimes does get shut down. Believe it or not, oh. the hero is, you know, counterable. And it's just don't... shutting out his farm. I don't mind putting the Void in the off lane, but you have to have a major damage dealer on the safe lane. Storm... Not I, I just don't feel he does enough. I, I really feel like he is a very weak hero in the past two patches, and although he can work in the right situation, you can't just say, okay, let's yeah, just run him in there and think he'll do work. Like It really has to be a very specific environment where he can actually function.
Uh, yeah, I actually agree with you. I don't. I'm not a huge fan of Storm in this current meta game, and I hate that they they keep throwing him in the in the, the safe lane and expect him to do work. And I just don't think that's the right decision. I just don't think it's the right choice. So, regardless of what we think, 4ASC are having a, a tough time doing anything across the map. They've gotten two kills to the name. The last time they got a kill was when. They've only gotten two this game, so you're you're fishing no matter what. Yeah. Like ev there's. Even if they got it like e equally spaced out, these two kills would have had to happen like once every like eight minutes. Like eight, at the eight minute mark, the sixty minute mark, that's still eight minutes without Was kills. Was there a deny? At an ideal. I think they might have only have one kill. I'm looking at the graph here, and I can only see at one point in time where there is a kill coming out. Axe for... has two kills, so hmm. he definitely dunked. Once. Yeah, that the was the eventual spirit earlier on in the game, I oh, yeah, the believe. Bench, yeah. And I don't yeah, know the... what else happened. Trixie's gonna get silenced. Daytime comes at the wrong time, but it doesn't matter. Milan gets the kill, and Trixie can't no. get away. No. Uh. The two the two kills were the Night Stalker being dove mid, but they turned it around with the coal and Grazine TPs. The other one was the dunk on the bottom lane in the jungle. My insanity are tearing for AC a new one, to say the very least. If they take this 2-2 tower top, they can start assaulting the base. Uh, 4AC is doing a good job of split pushing, but Tubman Man is down bottom. They're looking to take this tier 2 tower. They have three heroes in the near vicinity. And uh, Darkness is going to get popped again. With Tear, Boofy, now nah, he's too far away. They can't catch him. But attack. looks like it might be a tier 2 for a tier 2 trade. His Felix is going to get these couple of hits. The Glyph's available, though. Uh, Glyph is not available. Actually, just comes off cooldown now, coming out from 4AC, so... It looks like it will be a tier 2 for a tier 2 trade, but that is all they're getting. They're not getting kills, they're not getting a good exchange in terms of deaths, and... They don't even use the tier 2 glyph, they use it, they want to save it for the tier 3, I believe. Yeah. And I 23 think, armor on Milan with the medallion buff, like, he could just tank the tower all day long And they need a, a huge chronosphere, I mean, it's not like... Even with a huge chronosphere, I don't know, like, they have 5 man chrono, 5 man earth splitter, and MYA still might pull through. This is so, so bad for 4AC. They do have currently defending Vengeful Spirit, Stomp on Nicole, the uh, Alpha Wolf needs to see, okay, just gets, uh, oh, Matumba Man misses Blink, the Berserker's Call goes randomly. He also popped the Blade Mail as well, that was kind of awkward. And because MYI don't have their Vengeful Spirit, they back away. Nyx is pushing out the bottom lane, there's no reason for them to go too fast, they don't want to get split pushed. Look how much damage Valix did on this tier 3 tower. There's no reason for them, and, and they actually have a huge ward here as well, there's no reason for MYI to make a mistake at this point in time. No, yeah, uh, they, the mistake though would be just trying to solo defend it. They need at least two people to deal with the storm directly because of Orchid. Velix is still a great person to single out one hero and bring him down if it's like a Venge or a Dazzle. And they obviously don't want to rotate a core from their top lane push. So it's understandable how much uh, damage got done down bottom just so they could actually uh, cement their advantage up top. And as long as they're not feeding kills to the storm, it's still okay in this position but Roche has spawned it's going to be pretty much the, the pivot for how this game proceeds and with the Crimson Guard up for oh, the Night Stalker nice. with the Tide being at level 11 with his Force Blink and with that 10 second BKB on Cole everything is pointing towards MYI. Lazard is going to scout at the Roche pit here. Down bottom, you can see that Cole is not here currently. The Astral Spirit comes in. Milan has a double damage. He's going to keep Bash. Dom's going to miss onto every hero, and uh, they'll just keep spamming this up. But look at the Medallion, and Milan with a double damage will just go to work. They don't even need Cole, it looks like. I mean, Wave of Terror, uh, Medallion. They can even weave Milan to make him a bit tankier if necessary. Another Astral comes out. Cole still is here. Ball letting in for Valix. Uh, up under the yeah, they want to snipe. They, they really want to snipe the Aegis here, and it is definitely possible, but comes at great risk here, and I think it's actually smart to st keep Cole away from uh, Milan. Those two getting Berserker's Call would actually be giving 4ASC a chance to turn it about. The Berserker's Call, into the Earth Splitter, uh, Skyrath Mage LT, so on and so forth. It actually is like the only way they win a fight, so just keep Night Stalker at least uh, you know 400 units away from the Phantom Assassin, and they're going to be in business. Everyone backs away. They think they might be getting smoked on, but just the threat of the smoke pushes 4AC back into the base. It means that, guess what, MYI, they go right to Roche again, and Stomp's going to go. It's going to hit him a lawn. He will be slept up, as well as the rest of the squad, but it doesn't matter. They're going to take Roshan. It's going to be picked up by Cole. Ball lightning not even there, and MYI get another free Roshan in an Aegis. That goes their way, and they smoke up right afterwards as well with no vision coming up from the dire side. They're going to look to make a jump. And uh, but some of man might be the target if he's not careful. He should get the blink off here. There's uh, the Phantom Strike comes pretty swiftly, but 
We'll see. The smoke is still enabled. Darkness probably coming soon. Mask of Madness just farming oh, away. They feel it's passive, but it is indeed not. They go on Bollocks. They crit him down in the duration of Ravage, and that'll force at least a Storm buyback, which prevents him from buying BKB this game. Yeah, and uh, no Refresh Orb coming up for the Tide just yet, despite him being very farmed. He has a 4 staff, so he went for that instead of going for straight into uh, the Refresh Orb. So Ravage is down for at least uh, 130 seconds here, but that does mean that they have other... Uh, I mean, you still have plenty of right click. You still have Milan, who did, has darkness ready to go. It is nighttime, by the way, and an abyssal oh not completed. So, oh my gosh, that abyssal blade—that is just uh, unstoppable. It's now. time to go, man. It's time to finish this game off. If you're MYI, split up. Make sure you don't get stomped up. Make sure you don't get chronoed. And well, you have Cole with the Aegis, so he could just go toe to toe with anybody at this point. Milan has to be somewhat careful. They do have Crimson Guard, by the way. If you can get that off before Chrono comes, I think they just win the game. So, yeah, that's a big point to make is the fact that. Chrono, oh, doesn't negate block effects anymore, Luffy, but Abyssal, goodbye. Berserker's call. Chronosphere might go. Cole is going to get caught out with the Mystic Flare. There's the Aegis. They're trying to focus for Z down. They did get the Crimson Guard off, and they actually can't do anything. anything with that Chronosphere. They kill Cole with the Mystic Flare. That is it. Earth Splitter is not available because of, guess what? That guy is dead as all hell. Cole still has his BKB, as you've mentioned. They're going to take this Rax down. Matsuba Man is going to jump in. BKB, oh my god, he gets blown up. Cole gets the BKB off. Trixie, he's going to just time walk away. It is not time to fight. In fact, I don't think there's any time to fight if you're a 4ASC. MYI have obliterated 4ASC's chances this game. And they will look to take a second set of Rax and with it the game. Yeah, the only chance they have to, of surviving against Cole for more than like two seconds is a Ghost Scepter, and only ET has one. Like, I honestly think, think Axe going Ghost Scepter instead of Blade Mail has a chance to salvage this, but as it stands right now, they just, the game is way too hard. Uh, we're not going to see the th 32 to 2 dream realized as the, the base is just dying too quickly. Yeah, I don't, I don't see 10 kills happening in the next five minutes or so, which is probably how long this game will last. You think? I, I think that's. I'll, I'll take it. Yeah, under, that's generous. Under, under. Actually, Jeez, yeah. that, I can't imagine them holding it for two minutes, but we'll see. Maybe, maybe we see really passive play from MYI. I don't think so. You, I guess the wait for the BKB. Where? I mean, I guess they have to push out bottom. I don't know. Yeah. They don't want that to get like split push, but we'll take care of it. Uh, as far as TP's home, they're actually kind of lacking because they're so far on the offensive, but they've got three heroes oh, that God. can still. Get that creep wave moving. The complexity smoke ank. If this fails, this game's over. Yeah, they they actually, probably, well, they, I mean, that's just get to, get to your whatever you have after this game. Just go for the smoke. Call GG after it fails. That's Lazard is gonna do. get caught out. Yeah, okay. Actually, Valix just gets blown up by BKB Cole. Uh, there's the Ghost Scepter. Drax is gonna get bashed up once. Earthsplitter goes. Buffy does get one kill. Drax goes down though. Double kill for Cole. And I can't even nice. keep track of how many heroes are dying for 4 AC. In fact, all of them. It's gonna be a team wipe. Swap comes out as he's dying. Uh, five dead coming out. Oh, that's just a team wipe for 4 AC. The Finn stack is now officially dead. And uh, they will lose their third set of racks. And they have not called GG yet, but Milan goes straight down the bottom lane. He's he's a man on a mission. Yeah. Ags up for the Night Stalker just for a little bit of extra beef and uh, just a really fun utility. Uh, an item that can actually do wonders in terms of like engaging the right position in Roche fights. But look how little he cares about a tier 3 tower. Like he doesn't even have the dazzle behind him right now. But he can take this tower, he could probably take 50 tower shots. Like it's absolutely insane how much he armor, how much block he has. Game was good. MYI to use this Night Stalker extremely well. 4ASC didn't play ideally against it and. Again, I just don't think the Storm was in a sp position to do anything this game. We are not done yet, though. 4AC are holding on as best as possible, and uh, double Yule's on the next wall. Zerker's call. What was that? He forced himself back? What happened there? That was kind of awkward, because he might have used it. Yeah, Nyx is going to die, but... Oh, well. Well, they have fed two lives away. I mean, that's a thing, like, 26 to 4 now, so... I, I, I want to give some hope because obviously when they have a GG'd out, we still have a game on our hands, but at least at this point, like... If there's any game that has been closed out after, uh, you know, before GG, this might be it. I, I don't know if we have to... Uh, unless there is one miraculous scenario where Trixie gets a five-man Chronosphere and everyone is on the edge and Forius is able to take advantage of that with a huge Earth Splitter, with a huge Mystic Flare, with a huge Stomp, with anything. 
That that is the dream. The dream is alive until the throne is dead. But my my dream is like the storm spirit finds a region rune and then like sits over here and then balls all the way to like that five man chrono. Like uh, that's that's the only way you get the damage needed on top of Earth Splitter on top of Call. All landing from Valix. That was awkward. What's up, dude? Cole has Abyssal. Nope, he's just oh. gonna bash him. BKB popped. Cole's like, I want to keep going here. Phantom Strike him one, and Cole might just one v five them. Okay, yep. two hits. Just he's might. dead. Just mine. But some man comes in. Berserker call was used, and now he's gonna pop that up. Brazilian has Ravage in eight seconds, and Trixie does pop the Chronosphere. Cole is actually just taking it's no damage. Blizzard. He is actually just taking no damage now. Shadow Whip comes in. Trixie. Oh, oh goodbye, my friend. Cole crits him up, there's the Ravage to finish the game off with, and GG is finally called from the Finn squad. And MYI, 31 to 4, 30 minutes into the game. Milan, what a draft, what a game from your uh, Serbian slash Croatian squad. Um, it really, my insanity, this game was insane. I, I really like seeing how just bloodthirsty and relentless they can get with this Night Stalker, with this PA, 13-0 and 10. They set her up for success, and it didn't disappoint. This was actually a really solid game. Uh, Milan, with the backup of his supports, got a couple of kills very early on uh, on the mid lane and didn't even have to really roam that heavily to... Uh, really make his mark on the map like they brought the action to him and he was certainly willing to oblige there so I think they had some good ideas in general on the side of 4ASC but it did not come together the Pixie obviously did not get enough this game uh, Volix did, wasn't able to contribute just because he was facing a damn Night Stalker and uh, you have to, you have a gigantic shopping list ahead of you he he needed like 500 GPM this game and there's just no way it happens from safe lane so 0-5 and 2 Everything falls apart, and my insanity take another win against 4ASC. Huge game for them, but guys, we are not done today. We have one more game before we put today in the books. Of course, December 20th action still going on for Starletter EU. It is going to be Lines versus Virtus Pro. Uh, that'll be our last game of the day. So make sure you guys stick around. If you've enjoyed the casting, make sure you follow us on Twitter. I am Mott with me is Blaze. You can check us out at Mott Zoda on Twitter and at Blaze Casting for Blaze. So stick around, guys. We'll be back in just a moment.